All right, guys. Uh, I actually got a not repeater video for you guys today. Uh, I do play other weapons, just not as frequently. And Axe is probably one of the other weapons that I like the most. And it's also one of the most frequent builds I get asked for. So I'm just going to jump right into this as always for people that just want the build. I'm using Agris Axe with the Koshai Bond. It's an uh, extremely popular combination right there. You'll see why in a little bit. You have Grim Onslaught, of course, is the uh, meta right there for that. Overcharge Cylinder, very important. And uh, Discipline, I use Discipline because it's a fast boop, and sometimes you don't have the chance to wind up a heavy attack in response to a behemoth coming at you. So Discipline is just great for just a reactionary boop uh, to hit the behemoth when you don't have time. Lantern, honestly, there's... It doesn't really matter too much what lantern you use. I use broadside because it's a damage threshold knockdown in case your axe throw isn't ready. Because typically, obviously, your axe throw is going to be an instant uh, stagger threshold knockdown. But if it's on cooldown, broadside lantern's great for that. Other recommendations I'd say are Drask, Pangar, or Shrike. Uh, so just kind of do whatever you feel more comfortable with there. Just make sure you got uh, Cascade in there. Uh, Cascade's very important for this particular build. Now we got uh, Dark Watch in here for Cunning, Boreal Might for Tenacious, the Chrono Treads for Pulse, another very important part of this build, and uh, Mansell for Pred, and uh, the other utility slot. So Cascade, very important for several reasons. One, we're going to be doing a lot of axe holds with this, and when you're doing an axe hold, it drains your stamina. And if you have no stamina, you're going to build determination very slowly. So, very important to have the yellow orb drops from the cascade. Also, incredibly useful is grabbing a red orb right before you do your axe throw, or making sure you at least have the buff on for your axe throw. Big boost in damage right there. Cunning should be fairly obvious. A uh, crit boost and big uh, critical damage boost. Pred should be pretty obvious. Uh, when you're readying an axe throw, you should have been out of combat for a while, so you should have that boost. I am, I in particular, am not super great with axe, so I might not have Pred for a large portion of this run, but just ignore me, I'm bad with axe. Pulse, extremely, extremely important part to this build, just as important as Cascade. If anything, you have to have those two things uh, more than anything else. Uh, basically, you're going to be counting your attacks, and if you're not good at counting your attacks, just keep an eye on your little buff window. Make sure you're at your pulse buff when you throw your axe. Massive damage boost right there. Sharpened is uh, for part break chains. It's really easy to run something else other than sharpened. Uh, you could run... Uh, there's, there's, I, I can't think right now. There's other things you could run other than Sharpen, but I, in particular, just think it works well with this build. And then Tenacious, just for the flat damage boost. So with that, I'm going to get into this run here and kind of show you how effective this is. All right, oh, we got a Thunder Deep Drask right away. Let me get these buffs. Alright, I already got that first part break and the stagger is ready to go. There's the stagger. I um, barely hit that one, alright. I'm just trying to get more part breaks here. I think I already broke that leg actually. Ah, I still got hit. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't had too much practice with uh, avoiding the Thunder Deep's attacks because I didn't really farm them that much because the weapons and armor are terrible, so. That one's on me. Ooh, that was the tail all of a sudden, and there goes my axe. And there it is again. Yeah, pro tip, uh, don't miss your axe throws. <laughs> Bad times. 
Alright, he's dead. So, I mean, he died fairly quickly, I thought, for being terrible with axe. So... Uh, with that, let's get into round two as quickly as possible here. Spiteful Onslaught. Now, for those of you who don't know, in order to get Transcendent Spite as an option, you need to take either um, one of the other two critical hit ones, either the the one I just took or the one that's uh, Spiteful Evasion. That's going to happen a lot. You get the head break on the first throw right there. I'm just doing that to avoid some... God damn it, I thought he was going to be stopped. I guess he was not. Comes the stagger. I guess that's already broke. I'll nab these real quick. Oh, and he's dead. One of the nice things about Axe is the, uh, just the basic heavy attack is a very wide arcing swing. You can just one-shot pretty much anything, as long as you're in the general direction. Come on. There we go. No red one? Oh, well. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know, when you're playing Axe, your main goal should be to get your determination level up really high. Uh, so you got your determination meter and then your determination level. Those are the two meters uh, to the right of my... Uh, what's labeled as my R1 ability right there. So, wow, 15... 15k. On a counterpunch. Uh, I was told by somebody that the, um, the way that the math works on the counterpunch, it's affected by your determination level. So... I think that's why the damage was so high. Bugger. Get some damage boosts right there. Get another one right there. Oh, that did not boop him. Okay. That will, though. Now, if they're down, it's actually a little bit better to do your light attack chain, because you have the rapid slam at the end of that chain. And if they're down for long enough, like Nizaga, it will actually do a little bit more damage than your regular one. And there's my Transcendence fight. Alright. Another purple one. I am getting lucky on these. Three, four. Let's get a nice big crit in here on that weak spot. 56k. <laughs> Come on, you little bastard. See, I told you I'm terrible with X. I really wish I'd be hitting this weak spot right now. And now I'm apparently hitting them both. Alright, come on camera. Give me a break. Alright, I got another pulse active. 
I kind of want to hit this pangar leg. Turn around for me. Or do a donut roll like a dick. I turned. What a dick. Let's not get hit by that meatball. Ah, oh, what a prick. Hangar, can you not? One more hit, come on. You suck! I'm just gonna have to throw it without pulse, because I don't want to lose my determination. After the fight is over, totally feel free to get a few hits to ready your pulse for the next fight. Definitely a really good strategy that I totally forgot to do my first several fights. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's do... Now Locus of Power is really good for Axe because when you're dropping your Lantern for all the buffs and stuff, you're going to be getting that Locus of Power down for your throw. Ah, uh, no. What the heck? Come down. There we go. See, I can't even freaking catch my ex. That's how bad I am. <laughs> uh, but obviously you see the build works very well. So, that's all that matters. If you want to go out there and be great with axe, go do the thing. Be good with axe. Ah, come on. I wonder if... I actually honestly don't know if Determination or Pulse builds off of these. And it does! That's convenient. There's a Red Orb. And that is totally not what I wanted to happen. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, bud. Alright, whatever, this should still kill him. Or at least knock his tail off. Which is actually, that's honestly the thing that I use this build for the most is part breaks. If you need part breaks off any particular behemoth, this is really good to just BAM, part gone. Instantly. So... Uh, that's the build. I got a 50, I think it was a 54k and a 60 some odd k I uh, hit in there. So not not terrible. It could definitely be better, but you know, I'm terrible with X. So uh, with that, I'll call that video there, and I'll see you guys maybe next week for another non-repeater build. I don't know yet.